The first round is over, and the Hawks hit another home run. Hey Twelves, welcome in. Yesterday was the first night of the NFL Draft, and the Seahawks selected Byron Murphy, the destructive defensive tackle out of Texas. This was not really identified as a major need, but it does build on a strength and it brings youth to the defensive tackle room, which is something that the Hawks didn't really have. So let's dive into his tape to see what he brings to the Seattle Seahawks in 2024 and beyond. Byron Murphy is not the biggest guy. He measured in at only 6 foot and 297 pounds, but oh my goodness is he strong. Even though Texas had Tavondre Sweat, who outweighs Murphy by like 70 pounds, Murphy was the guy who played more nose tackle because he's just so good at holding up against double teams. Byron Murphy is the master of the dead leg technique in order to hold up against double teams. Here, when he's trying to anchor, he drops to one knee, or uses the dead leg technique, and he's able to basically completely hold his ground against two full-size offensive linemen. Despite the fact that he had two guys on him, he's not only able to not go backwards, but he actually splits the double team and leaps into the backfield to get the run stop. I know that everyone loves what he does as a pass rusher, and trust me, I do too, but what he brings as a run defender might be even more exciting. Here on this play, he not only shows his quickness, but also his instincts. Instead of just engaging the player in front of him and trying to blow him back, Murphy is quickly able to diagnose where this run is probably going and swim moves around the guy who is trying to block him. Now he's working across the offensive line and basically looks like a linebacker at the first level of the defense. He's able to mirror the back and gets the tackle pretty easily. As a run defender, Murphy has everything that you would want. He has elite play strength and anchor to hold up, and especially since he's going to play more three technique in Seattle, that's going to be even more of a strength because he won't have to face quite as many double teams as he did at Texas. But he also has the quickness to make the splash plays and really be that impact player, not just the guy that soaks up the double teams. So I think from both perspectives, he's just going to be an elite run defender, and I'm so excited to see what he's able to do and how Mike McDonald is going to use him. Hey 12s, quick plug and then we will get back to the video. I am working to get 1,000 subscribers, so if you appreciate the content, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. So let's get back to Byron Murphy. We also need to get hyped for his pass rush because it's really great as well. The elite combination of quickness and raw strength translates perfectly to his pass rushing ability. Let's look at this very interesting clip against Bama. He starts outside and gives the guard a fake and then darts back inside. For a lot of guys, this would be enough. He's going to be disruptive, he's going to move the quarterback off his spot, but Murphy does not settle for just this win. He uses the fact that the guard is now off balance to quickly rip him to the ground and freeze himself up. The quarterback does get the ball away very quickly, but to me this showcased the entire package. He had the quickness to get the guard off balance and the strength to throw him to the ground to maximize the play. And I think this is just what he's going to do when he gets one-on-one -on -one in the NFL. Another piece of his pass rushing is how he gets skinny and bends. I know saying a defensive tackle gets skinny is ridiculous, but I do think this is kind of what he looks like. Here he uses the rip move to split the double team, and because he's so low to the ground, he's really difficult for them to get under and really stop. I think his rip move and his bull rush are going to be kind of unstoppable in the NFL, and he's at least going to get the disruption. Power is pretty much the basis of every interior defensive lineman's pass rushing arsenal, but Murphy has a tremendous amount of power and he's able to weaponize his natural leverage to his advantage. In both run defense and his pass rushing, he has a tremendous amount of experience in defeating double teams, and I think what he put on tape is that, especially when he's facing two guys, he's really good. As he gets into the NFL and he's going to see more one-on-ones, I also think he's going to win those. He has the entire package for pretty much everything in run defense and pass rush, and that's why the guy was a top 16 pick and the second defender off the board. There is no such thing as a perfect prospect, and I mentioned this at the top, but Murphy is just not the biggest guy. His arm length and his height is not prototypical for the position. I think he does a great job of compensating for this um, with the rest of his strengths, right? He has so many strengths, and he really uses his lack of size to his advantage in some cases. But the fact that he's not, you know, the, the 6'4", 320 that everyone wants, that does have to be brought up. 
He also ends up on the ground a little bit too much. He plays with a tremendous amount of energy, which is definitely a massive pro, but I do think that he can get a little un unbalanced and end up getting toppled. Um, I think this clip shows it best though. Here he loses his one-on-one. -on -one. When he tries to bull rush, he gets thrown to the ground by the guard who catches him being off balance. But there is no way that I can spin that into being a good thing. But what Murphy does next is pretty incredible. Here, Murphy shows off his relentlessness because he goes from this point right here to getting the sack. He jumps right up and makes the diving tackle on the quarterback. One last weakness, I do think that Murphy misses the quarterback a little bit more than you would hope. Again, the relentlessness of how he rushes and he's like very energetic and a little bit chaotic at some times. And so he does need to get better at just kind of controlling that when he gets close to the quarterback and really squaring up and making the tackle instead of just diving right past the guy. I think this can be improved at the NFL level. And honestly, at the end of the day, disruption is disruption. And if you're making the quarterback move like this with from interior pressure, like that's still a win. But you do want to see him finish a lot more of these free rushes into sacks at the NFL level. Overall, I love this pick. The only criticism that I have is this wasn't really the biggest need on the team. Obviously, every Hawks fan knows this, but offensive guard was the far bigger need. And there were players that were there that I think could have filled this need. But I do think this was kind of a sneaky need because I don't really know what the future holds for Draymond Jones. In year one, Murphy will mostly be in a three-man rotation, which is great because McDonald loves to rotate these guys. But next year, I think it's completely plausible that Murphy, you know, steps up because Draymond gets cut. I'm by no means projecting Draymond gets cut or hoping for it at all. But in 2025, it's pretty reasonable to say that defensive tackle could be one of our biggest needs. And if you look at how the defensive tackle market is developing right now, I mean, the, the pay for these guys is going through the roof. So getting someone on a cost-controlled contract, cost-controlled rookie contract, well, that's just great, right? He's going to be, you know, he's going to give us some youth at the position that we really didn't have. Um, and I think that, you know, he's going to be the big cornerstone of this defense for years to come. And I would say that's a need. You have to look at needs over two to three years, and I think that defensive tackle makes a lot of sense because we really didn't have any young starting level players there. Byron Murphy is the perfect fit for this defense, and he's going to get snapped really quickly and often in his rookie year. The impact that this player is going to have for years to come is a great value at pick 16. I didn't think the Hawks would get a chance to pick him, and I think he's a fantastic player and a fantastic scheme fit. Overall, for me, this is a pretty easy A. Like, the player, you can't really criticize that much. He's just such a good player. This guy should have gone top 10. The need isn't, you know, the biggest need, but I think it's a pretty big need. Um, and I, so I'm really excited to see what he's able to do. So overall, this is a pretty easy A grade on the draft pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate the content. And let me know your thoughts down below of what you think about this pick and also where you hope the Hawks go on day two. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.